Hey everybody, Ed Holmut, Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel. Hope everyone's doing well today. Today I thought I would do officially the one millionth review on YouTube of the Shit Freya Plus preamp. Uh, and I'm so lucky to be able to do that. No, actually I am. The reason the, the Shit Freya is in here is I needed a good preamp uh, to for reviewing the Orchard Audio Star Crimson amp. Um, I have a Cambridge Evo 150, which you can use as a preamp, and it's quite good in that role. Uh, but I needed something a little bit different. And obviously the shit product has a great reputation, a big fan base, and it's very well made and it's a US product, which of course I'm very pleased with. So um, I did, that's what I did. Uh, so how I used this and the equipment I used connected to it were, I used a Cambridge MXN10 uh, streamer DAC, although I used the optical output to go into a Gashelli J2 socketed AKM4499 DAC with on the single-ended output, the new Sparkos 2509 uh, chip, which is huge. It's about that big, it's giant. Um, and I used the standard uh, Texas Instruments op amps for the balance side of that DAC. And I connected the DAC, both balanced and single-ended to the Freya Plus. I also connected the Eversolo DMPA6 optically to the to the excuse me to the Gashelli DAC, and I also connected the DMPA6 uh, balanced into this and used it strictly as a streamer DAC. And by the way, that DMPA6 has that very expensive upgraded linear power supply. So I had some really good sources for this, and then of course I also compared it against the Evo 150 as a preamp as well, with similar sources connected to it. So. The unit itself is a fully balanced preamp. It has three separate modes in it. One is a unity gain mode, which is zero. It goes through almost no circuitry. It just goes through the attenuator and out. Uh, and when you do that, whether it's a balanced input or a single-ended input, there is no circuitry to convert or maintain the balanced nature of it. So it's going to be coming out on the XLRs on the back of this as a single-ended sig signal, not a balanced signal. But in the solid state buffer mode and in the tube buffer mode, fully differential balance solid state. So that's not a problem. So I listened to the unity gain mode for about half hour, 45 minutes. I ran some different music through it. I tried classical music because sometimes that can be the most revealing. And I found that mode to be okay. I wasn't blown away by it. It wasn't amazing. Uh, it was thin. Uh, the bass didn't have a lot of heft to it or drive. Although I would say that the, the response was balanced. The response through the Freya is going to be pretty neutral. The Freya does, in unit game mode, puts no, you know, uh, taste on it or flavor on it at all because it's just a pass through. Um, when you get into solid state mode, it becomes a little different. So then I went switched to solid state mode, and I did listen to solid state mode for several hours, and I found that the music was much better, better body, better drive, better sense of kind of, you know, urgency to it or life to it. I guess life would be a better word than urgency. Um, so I was you know, well pleased with that. Bass was good. It was ex nicely extended. Um, mid bass, everything was good through the, the frequency range. But in the mid range, I felt it was a bit thin. Male vocals sounded a little bit like they, like the gentleman had lost some weight um, and wasn't as hefty. As you guys know, I listened to, uh, on occasion, Luciano Pavarotti or Placido Domingo, you know, uh, tenors. And I did listen to some baritone. You know, they have the three tenors albums together, and then they have uh, Pavarotti and Placido Domingo performing with baritone uh, singers, and I can't think of a name off the top of my head. And all those guys, you know, Pavarotti's a big guy. It sounded like he lost a little weight. It wasn't a tremendous amount of heft or energy or power, that normal sense of that big barrel-chested voice of his. But it wasn't bad. And I'm, again, I'm teasing out super fine details in this review. There is a lot of good about this. Um, so don't, don't take what I'm saying as criticism. It's just how I found it to sound to me. So um, in the buffer mode, again, the mid range was good, if a little bit thin. As we moved up into female vocals in, the, in, in kind of the uh, upper mid range, lower treble area, again, there was this thinness. Um, there was reasonable resolution. It wasn't amazing. It wasn't razor sharp. It wasn't pinpoint. Uh, and when you got into the upper treble, I felt like it got a little bit, I don't know, a little glary, maybe. It had a little bit of glare to it. Um, but again, not bad. Just kind of a lack of that sense of air. Um, uh, and 
a little bit in symbol decays and things like that, they were kind of abrupt. They didn't seem to hang in the air quite as long. Um, so, but it was, the solid state mode was, was very good. And again, I listened to it for several hours and, you know, I enjoyed it. Uh, when I switched to the tube mode, now I cannot compare unity gain and solid state buffer mode to tube mode because A, it's a 12 dB gain once you turn those tubes on and B, when you switch from solid state to tube, you got to wait 45 seconds or a minute for the heaters to bring the tubes up to operating temperature so they'll actually pass the signal. So you can't compare side by side. But when I did go to tube mode and I did listen to tube mode for several hours, several hours a day over several days, um, I found that the it was much richer, as you would expect with tubes. It was richer, but not necessarily warmer. Um, in the Unity Gain mode, the sta sound stage was okay. It was kind of thin, just kind of there. It didn't really make a big impression on me. In solid state buffer mode, the sound stage was much better. Instruments were reasonably well placed. It wasn't deep. It wasn't super wide or tall, but it was pretty pleasing. In tube mode, the so sound stage got a lot larger. Um, it eked itself a little bit. It, it managed to move itself a little bit beyond the width of the speakers, but for the most part, all of the staging lived between the speakers. The height was reasonable. Um, center image was fair. It was, it was there centered, but it was kind of not in focus. And I guess that's the best way I can describe it. Uh, image depth was okay. It wasn't amazing, but it was pretty good. Um, and uh, it sounded, th th those were all reasonably well, but on the bass side, it sounded like the bass rolled off faster than it did in solid state buffer mode. Like, and it sounded like there was a bump in the bass. So if the solid state buffer mode got me down into the 30 Hertz range, the tube mode probably only got me just below 50, maybe 40 Hertz, but then it was accentuated. I think there's probably a bump in the, in the bass curve and in the, you know, in that bass mid bass area, it was very pleasing. Um, it had good drive. There was good, you know, quote unquote, and I hate to use the term meat on the bones, but that had more substance to it, more, more, uh, you know, kind of fleshed out a little better resolved, um, but a little bumped and not as articulate as some other uh, combinations with this amp I've heard. So not bad, not at all. And again, I'm just teasing out the fine details in the upper mid range or in the, in the lower mid range, uh, upper uh, bass range, male vocals had more body. Uh, Pavarotti and Plasto Domingo didn't sound like Lee lost as much weight, but it still sounded not quite as rich as they're normally, you know, as they can normally sound. Um, but again, not, these are not real criticisms per se. They're just things I've noticed. Now in the mid range, again, I think it's, I think it's kind of a slightly scooped out, kind of a, a very gentle U curve response to this amp, little, little enhancement in the base 50 ish, 80 ish Hertz range little thin through the mids and then a little bit hot on the top end. So female vocals were good. Um, they were actually, they were quite good. I was listening to uh, Kathleen Battle um, and uh, the Chicago Symphony Orchestra doing arias. And she sounded really, she sounded very good. She sounded very present, but <clears throat> not it was not a razor sharp sound because the female vocal, obviously our ears are very sensitive to voice uh, frequency range. And her vocals were good, but they didn't carry that, that power because she was a very powerful singer. Didn't carry quite the power that, uh, that I'm used to hearing in other, common, in other electronics combinations, but still very, very good. Don't get me wrong. Through the upper treble, it got a little spicy at, at the top end a little bit, um, a little bit of glare. Um, not bad. And it depends on the speakers you pair it with. So just to give you guys an idea, I ran the Big Elax and it sounded good and they're a little bit soft on the top end. So that was a nice combination. I ran the Big Energies. They can be very revealing speaker uh, and I can make them hot or cool on the top or warm on the top end because I have a, a way to adjust the tweeter. So in my normal adjustment mode, it was good and I had to tweak it down just a smidge to take some of the glare off. And that was quite good. And of course, the bass response was very good because this does have a little bit of a plump bass response. Then I ran the uh, Braun slash ADS, uh, and I'll do a whole history and, and a review on those speakers as well. Uh, and that had some good body to it. Now that's a sealed box, eight inch three way big bookshelf. And that, you know, a sealed box rolls off real gentle, not super extended. So the little bump in this was very nice there, but the glare on the top end made them just kind of ring a little bit. 
Um, and then I used the DBR62 as the ELAC debut reference. That was a very good combination. Um, less glare on the top, the, the DBR is a little bit rolled off in the top end, which is to my kind of my taste. Then I put the ruthlessly revealing monitor audio silver 100s on it. And while it they imaged like magic, I mean, this was a great combination for those with imaging. There was a little hotness on the top end, a little stridency up there. And the monitor audio is lean that way a little bit. They're a little bit bright to begin with, um, but it uber detailed. And imaging just, they're magic when it comes to that. So those are the combinations of speakers I used. And so that helped me kind of tease out some of the details with this. So two buffer mode, the best of the three, I think, um, especially because of the gain. Now the solid state buffer mode sounds very good too and would be very rewarding, but you can only really use it on balance because you need the four volts coming in because there's just not adding any voltage to it. There's no gain. Uh, but it is buffered. So you do get the benefit of the differential balance on the output side. And that was, of the three modes, the most neutral, the most, uh, I don't know if authentic is the right word, and and not necessarily the most revealing, but it was just, had a better sense about it, but um, not very much drive to it. So I, I, that's the be that's the best way I can describe it. It was pleasant, and it was okay, and I could listen to it for a couple hours without any problem. It just left me left me wanting a little something. Tube mode was great, um, you know, more drive, more power, more you know, uh, more authority to the music. Um, but I didn't feel like I got the bass extension. I felt like on the top end, it was a little little bit glare. So, but don't get me wrong, this is a great product, and at eleven hundred dollars. It's a bargain. Now it's available with the match six NS seven, excuse me, six NS seven tubes, or you can do it with the solid state LISST tubes. I've not heard those, so I don't know. I did roll the tubes a little bit. There was some difference, not enough to really worry about. I, if you were going to go NOS six SN sevens, you know, vintage ones, uh, and replace all four, because I only replaced these two, rolled these two, um, I think you might be able to get a little better sound. You might be able to get a little of that glare out of the top end. Um, but again, it's going to take some experimentation and I couldn't tell you exactly which tube's going to do it. So I can highly recommend the shit Freya. However, caveat, paired with the Orchard Audio Amp, this is a ruthlessly revealing amplifier. It is 100% neutral and it is quite good. This amp brought forward some of the shortcomings of this, I think, because I've heard this preamp pair to shit amplifiers like a Vidar or a pair of Agiers, and it sounds amazing. And I think the voicing of this matches the voicing of the rest of the shit product line. Um, I did for a, a hot second, take my shit Bifrost and plug it in single-ended. And there was a lot of uh, kind of synergy there because I think the, the way the Bifrost is voiced and the way this is voiced, they match. And I think the way this is voiced and the way the shit amplifiers are voiced would match up very, very well. This is a tough one. Now, when I ran the Evo 150 as a preamp into it, um, I felt like I got better performance, but Evo 150 is $3,000. You would expect that, right? This is 1100 bucks. So all in all, I can highly recommend the Freya, but be careful what you pair it with. If you're going to don't, I wouldn't do it in, in something in this price category. I would keep price appropriate products with this. Um, shit Vidar, Shit Azure, um, amps in that price range, uh, amps in that performance category, I think will match up better with this. And then as far as its ability to give you good detail, yeah, it does a great job of that. Uh, a lot depends on the source you plug in like anything else. So I felt the synergy here was reasonable. Um, I felt that it this amp kind of helped me tease out some of these, you know, kind of little inconsistencies in the amp um, that I mentioned earlier. So good combination overall. I, I listened to it. I've been listening to it for a good solid six or seven days, you know, several hours a day because uh, I'm too lazy to pick it up and move it. Um, so really, really good in a, and very pleasing. So anyway, that's the shit for you. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a like. Please give me a subscribe. About 80% of the folks that watch my videos don't subscribe. And if you were to subscribe, it really, really helps the channel. The more subscribers I have, the more credibility I have with the manufacturers to get new gear into review. And I do have a bunch of stuff into review that will be coming up.
Um, we just recently passed through 2,500 subscribers. And guys, that's amazing. Thank you so much. I just, I can't believe that there are 2,500 people that actually care about what I have to say. And hopefully it's entertaining. I'm, I'm really, really grateful and very humbled by the whole experience. So anyway, please give me a like, a subscribe. Please comment. Anybody who's commented, no, I react. I respond to the comments. Uh, if you have questions, I try to answer them. If you share with me your thoughts or opinions or your experiences, I love that stuff. So please do that. Uh, descript, uh, disclosure in the description, Amazon affiliate links. I make a small commission. doesn't affect what you pay or your ability to return a product. Below that is a list of all the equipment I have in the studio that I use for reviews. Although I must say that my Cambridge AXR 100 is out on loan to a good friend of mine uh, who's you know starting to begin his audio file journey. So that's great. But all, all that product's listed there. And then below that are playlists, all my crazy playlists titled Cobuzz and Spotify. I'd love to get your opinions on them. But more importantly, I'd love to, for you to share your playlist with us and I'll put them anonymously in a community post and maybe we can build a library of music to expose ourselves to new and different stuff and share our tastes. And I think that's the best part of being an audiophile is the discovery of new music. So anyway, thank you so much. I am so grateful for the time you guys give me on my videos. I'm so grateful for your positive comments. I'm so grateful for this whole experience. I'm having so much fun with this. I hope that enthusiasm comes through. I really do. Um, and again, so please like, subscribe, follow me on uh, you, on Instagram if you wish. And this is Ed Holmwood, Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel, saying it's now time for you to go listen to some music. Thanks so very much.